Well, at least they managed to find out what the fuck the logo is, thanks to uh, Orc Slayer and a friend of mine. Thanks, uh... Oh, crap, what was his name? In uh, let me see. Um, give me a minute, people. Nope, nope, nope. Ah! Thanks! Fumi2 Tech Story, even though you haven't actually posted any. Well, not that much. Much, actually. I'm still waiting for part or three he of that, but oh well. Yeah, oh well. Well, anyway, no. Today we are going to do What If Jakku Joined the Chapter Legion? My chap joined the Alpha Chapter Reason. Now, due to people and due to the Alpha Legion like being as known as a fucking in well anything, and there's not that much lore about the Alpha Legion, we're gonna go back to a certain Australian that allowed us to help with this one. So <sighs> say hello to this Australian who likes to talk in hentai crap. But I can't name him, gotta have the funny in it. Shout out to Major Kill, because if it wasn't for him, I would have. So, here you go. And we'll actually look up the other guy, probably 40k theories after this, just in case if there's not enough. Oh, because this guy's like 19 minutes, and that guy's like 20, 30 minutes, so. There you go. How are you supposed to make a lore video on a Space Marine Legion the Games Workshop is even unsure about? I don't even. I don't even think Alpharius knows what is going on. If he was alive, which he might be, who knows? Ha! Psych! I'm the god of lore. I know everything. Even things that haven't been written yet. As such, who better to tell you about the mind-bending Alpha Legion than me? Luton? Pfft. Arch? No chance. One Mind Syndicate? Don't make me laugh. If you hear anything that doesn't sound quite right or correct in this video, that is because your perception of the law is lesser than mine. Even if I say something that directly contradicts published writing, I am still correct, as the writer's perception of the law is lesser than mine. I'm joking. If you're new here, I'm not this much of a delusional egomaniac. I'm actually Alpharius. <clears throat> Sorry, so I'll try to stay away from shitty memes this video. Before we get started, I have a question for you. Are you sick of not being able to watch your favorite shows in your country? Are you tired of your government's oppression of your use of your- or can't use certain region-locked websites or software? Your legion is actually loyalist or traitor. How far it guarantee? Thank you Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. Today we'll go over who the Alpha Legion are and where they came from. We'll also go over the life and maybe death of Alpharius, as well as what his twin brother Omegon is up to. Then we'll try and figure out if the Alpha Legion is actually loyalist or traitor, or both. Let's get into it. The glorious Big E, Emperor of Humanity and flawless father figure, knew that if he wanted to achieve his dreams of galactic conquest, he would need a diverse cast of children to achieve this. He would need builders such as Rogel Dawn, he would need leaders such as Horus, and he would need mentally disabled kids so he'd seem progressive, such as Angron. He also knew that he would need some kind of subterfuge, hence he created Alpharius, who instantly pulled a fast one on the Emperor and revealed that he had an identical twin, Omegon. This put the Primarch count at 21, which would be a pretty unesthetic number for an OCD nut like the Emperor, so he hid the knowledge of Omegon's existence in order to maintain an even number. Before his Primarchs could grow up, however, four salty assholes called the Gods of Chaos abused the Primarch's mother's postnatal depression and got her to throw her 20 children into the warp. Bitch moved by her. Each Primarch was scattered across the galaxy and landed on a different human-occupied planet. Some Primarchs landed on civilized worlds and easily became their leaders. Other Primarchs jetted at their planets like a meteor and had to crawl their way through molten lava to get to the surface. Alpharius and Amigon well, it's not actually clear what happened to them, especially not Omegon. There have been rumors and theories based on solid evidence, so we'll go through those instead and you can try and choose which origin story you like best. Weirdly enough, all of the following potential origins admit any mention of Omegon. The first theory is that Alpharius landed on a technologically advanced world that was soon invaded by some hentai tentacle monsters that killed everyone except for Alpharius. 
They thought he was so interesting, so they instead tortured him and did tentacle hentai stuff to him. The Emperor soon arrived and was absolutely livid as to what was happening to his son, hence he genocided the hentai monsters and brought Alpharis under his care. <coughs> the second theory is that he landed on an empty planet full of dead cities and was forced to fend for himself for years until a Xeno pirate ship arrived to loot the planet and was quickly massacred then commandeered by Alpharius, who then went off to find the Emperor. The third theory is that Horus and his lunar wolves engage in a space battle with a renegade human fleet, and despite winning the battle, a lone ship boarded Horus' flagship. The man in that ship then killed Horus' bodyguards before confronting Horus. Horus then realized the man was a fellow Primarch, Alpharius. The fourth and final theory is that Alpharius was never taken by the Chaos Gods, and instead was raised since birth by the Emperor but was kept a secret. Now, if I was a lesser YouTuber, I would say, it could be one of these, it could be all of these, or it could be <coughs> none of these. Like some smart ass wise guy, but I'm not going to do that. Remember, Alpharius was the only known Primarch of the Alpha Legion, so anyone that saw Amigon would assume he was Alpharius. I believe that Amigon was saved from being given to the Chaos Gods, hence he was raised alongside the Emperor. Due to the Emperor wanting to keep Amigon as such a big secret, it's likely he kept his gestation capsule separate from the rest of the Primarchs, so when shit hit the fan, he wasn't actually in the room. As for Alpharius, he either escaped the dead planet then attacked Horus, so combining Theory 2 and 3 together, or he was indeed mind raped by hentai monsters and doesn't want to talk about it, so he came up with the second and third theories as a cover for it. Bam! Mystery solved. While Alpharius and Amigon had their mysterious upbringing, the Alpha Legion had an equally if not more so wacky time. They, along with the Space Wolves and Salamanders, were part of the Experimental Legions, created with very specific purpose in mind. Hence the Alpha Legion barely took part in the Unification Wars, beyond a couple of their agents performing secret spy missions to field test them. Despite their good performance, as well as their stable gene seed implantation rates, their numbers were kept deliberately small, only 5 to 10,000 compared to the other legions who were aiming close to 100,000. It's not particularly clear why they were kept small. Maybe the Emperor was waiting for the Primarchs to be ready, or maybe he was concerned by the prospect of having a full legion of super spies. Either way, the Alpha Legion did fuck all until their twin Primarchs assumed command. As an interesting note, despite Alpharius and Megon being the shortest of the Primarchs, Alpha Legion Astartes were very tall. So tall, that if some of them were given Alpharius' armor, then they would match his size. With two Primarchs, the Alpha Legion rapidly grew and became a force to be reckoned with, winning stunning victories at the Battle of Redacted against the horrific Redacted. I remember when Alpharius, when all seemed lost, wielded the legendary sword of a thousand Redacted, and slayed that which had no life. In seriousness, the point is that whilst the other legions such as the Ultramarines had a very clear record of what they were doing during the Great Crusade, the Alpha Legion did not. We do know, however, that they often deployed in mass against Xenos, whilst when faced against human foes, they just used small covert squadrons to take out key targets and break the enemy without even needing to fight them on the battlefield. They would cause so much confusion and chaos that by the time the full might of the Alpha Legion attacked, it would be more like slaughtering headless chickens than anything else. Unfortunately, being overly secret and fighting with absolutely zero honor did not tickle many of the other Legion's pickle. The Alpha Legion were distrusted as even the Legions that fought alongside them had no clue what the fuck they were doing most of the time. There were numerous instances where a civil war almost broke out between the Alpha Legion and other Legions even before Horus had gone full Jihad mode. Despite this mistrust, the Alpha Legion continued to be an extremely successful Legion, achieving numerous known victories and countless more unknown ones. Their Legion size was also unknown, but could genuinely be considered the largest during the Great Crusade due to their low casualty fighting style as well as their really stable gene seed implantation. They also grew fond of using non astartes as valued assets. After all, it's a lot easier to get agents to blend in with the enemy if they aren't 8 foot tall roided up autismos. As time went on, things got worse. Sure, initially the other legions were being stuck up assholes and discounting the very effective and valid methods of the Alpha Legion, but then Alpharius started showing off. Every planet they encountered, even ones that were more than willing to join the Imperium through negotiation or just by threatening them with big guns, had to be defeated in the most particular and intricate ways which often involved a massive expenditure of resources in human life. 
It would be like your mate asking you to get him a beer out of the fridge. And instead of walking over to it like a normal person and just getting it out, you spend hours creating this hectic domino train that would somehow result in the beer ending up in your mate's lap. However, the bottle would be smashed, or most of the beer would have come out of it by then. So, yeah, good for you. Very impressive. But also, the result is shit, and your mate is pissed off. When Alfaros was asked why he does this, he answered, because otherwise, it is too easy. This was the final straw for a lot of Primarchs, most notably Gilliman, who said the Alpha Legion were a bunch of untrustworthy egomaniacs who treated the Great Crusade like a game. By this point, however, the Alpha Legion depended on nobody except itself and had grown even more. Soon after this, Horus's mind finally shattered after decades of doing his best to fend off his ever-impending boldness. Hence, he fell to chaos and began dragging the other Primarchs and Legions down with him. Alpharus and Amagon did join with Horus, but the reason for that is confusing and frustrating. At a glance, it seems fair enough. They were shunned by the other legions, save Horus's, and already displayed a lot of shitty traits. Their fall seems way more justifiable than Mortarion's or even Horus's. However, the truth is that despite turning on the Imperium, they stayed loyal to the Emperor, or at least they thought they did. See, the Cabal, a group of really powerful Psychozenos who are also massive assholes, approached Alpharus and Amigon and showed them two futures. Future 1. They help the Emperor beat Horus. Horus dies and humanity slowly decays over the course of the next 10 to 20,000 years, until the entire galaxy is consumed by chaos, or you know, maybe the Tyranids. Future 2. They help Horus beat the Emperor. Horus takes control of the Imperium, but feels really bad about what he did. Plus, Chaos has a terrible administration abilities, hence the Imperium tears itself apart after a couple hundred years, causing humanity to go extinct and killing Chaos due to them burning themselves out and having no fuel. Either way, it was a bit of a lose-lose. Alpharius decided that the true goal of the Emperor was to beat Chaos, so he would help Horus thus ensure Chaos was destroyed in order to fulfill what he perceived to be his father's dream. Amigan, on the other hand, wasn't so eager to do this. Remember, if Amigan was indeed raised by the Emperor, then he likely knew more about the Emperor's vision and that fighting him to fulfill his vision was extremely retarded. Amigan knew both options were shit. It was either mankind dies in 300 years or everyone dies in 10 to 20,000. So Amigan chose option 3. But Major Kill, there was no option 3. Shut the fuck up, Timmy! If Amigan can cosplay as his brother for hundreds of years, then he can create a paradox. Amigan chose to do neither. He would not help Horus, nor would he help the Emperor. Unfortunately, Alpharus did not choose option 3, hence Alpharus joined up with Horus, meaning that in order for Amigan to choose to do option 3, he had to cancel out Alpharus' efforts. This is where all the confused fuck Alpha Legion memes come from. Sure, Alpharus was still technically loyal in his own mind, but if we are honest, he absolutely wasn't loyal at all. However, Amigon was indeed acting to undo the efforts of Alpharius. He had to be sneaky though, as despite being Alpharius' twin, he was second in command. If Alpharius knew Amigon had chosen to undo his efforts, he likely would have destroyed him. Hence, the Horus Heresy was a confusing time for the Alpha Legion. They did indeed take part in the Istvan Dropsite Massacre, the Alpha Legion being one of the reinforcing legions that betrayed the Salamanders, Iron Hands, and Raven Guard and mowed them down. There was nothing Amigan could have done to stop that from happening. What he could do, however, was get the White Scars to Terra to help defend it. When the heresy broke out, a number of legions did not know who was on what side. The White Scars were the most confused out of everyone. Alpharius ordered Amigan to try to get the Khan to join Horus. Amigan could stop this. Hence, when his fleet approached the White Scars, instead of greeting them as brothers and negotiating with them, he instead blockaded them and antagonized them. He also blew up a signal jammer that allowed Rogel Dawn's warning of the heresy to reach Jagged Eye. Hence, he basically helped confirm Rogel's warning. Now, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows from Amigan. He still had to do some heretical shit, such as give Horus the map of the Soul System's defense, as well as fuck with Gulliman, although that second part was probably more for the lols, to seem like he was helping Chaos. Alpharius soon engages in a duel with Dawn in a battle near Terra, and Alpharius is trying to tell Dawn about how the only way to win is by actually letting Horus win, which obviously makes no sense to Dawn, hence Dawn brutally kills Alpharius, Mortal Kombat style. With Alpharius dead, Amigan takes command of the Alpha Legion and withdraws them from the Siege of Terra, as he no longer has to worry about Alpharius destroying him for sabotaging his plans. 
he still fought against the Loyalists, but it was more so for show and in pretty unimportant battles. If you think this is a little bit far-fetched, then listen. When the Big E finds about Alpharius and the Alpha Legion betraying him, he says, I quote, Alpharius, my son, what chance did you give my dream? He does not mention Amigon betraying him because Amigon did not. When he was playing that weird 8D chess with Malkador that simulated possible Horus heresies, his move was to ensure that one of the Alpha Legion twins would remain loyalist at least, and that both of them going traitor would mean the destruction of Terra. So with the death of Alpharius, why isn't the Alpha Legion now just completely loyalist under Amigon? After all, it has been confirmed that due to Amigon's actions and the resurrection of Gilliman, the Cabal's two futures no longer exist and are invalid. Well, the Alpha Legion was and still is huge. Alpharis did not sit down with them all and explain how they were still loyalists but had to fight against the Emperor, because he likely would have been called a retard numerous times. Instead, he just twisted them and allowed them to be traitors. Numerous Alpha Legionnaires are very chaotic and mutated, their souls pledged to the Dark Gods. Hence Amigan inherited a legion full of chaos aligned space marines, with only a small portion of legionnaires that are still directly loyal to him and the Emperor. A large amount of these chaos ones would have also broken off into their own warbands that are not controlled by Amigon. Hence explaining when Alpha Legion just does evil shit with no overarching benefit to the Imperium. Despite this, Amigon still uses his chaos marines to the Imperium's benefit when he can. For example, the Siege of Vrax. When the siege first started, it did not involve chaos. The Imperium almost abandoned the siege as it was a waste of time and resources. Sure, the bad guys had really overpowered chemical weapons that would have been horrific if used on the Imperium, but the Imperium did not think they would do it as the Rebellion faction was not obviously chaos aligned. Then the Alpha Legion uncharacteristically rocked up, full to the brim with chaos corruption, and then made it obvious that Vrax had to either be taken or destroyed. Seems weird that a covert legion would basically reveal their cards and cause the enemy to commit a large force against you. The Siege of Rax ended with the chemical weapons out of Chaos's hands. If the Alpha Legion did not intervene, it's likely this would not have been the case. Once Horus was killed by the Emperor after turning the Emperor into a quadriplegic, the Alpha Legion were the only traitor legion that did not flee to the Eye of Terror. Seemingly, Amigan wanted to distance himself and his legion from the direct clutches and control of Chaos. If he set up shop on a demon world, it would only be a matter of time before he fell and his legion claimed by Titsnitch. Now each Primarch has a special ability. For Rogel Dawn, his willpower is able to calm the warp around him. Conrad can see the future. Vulcan can't die. And Magnus is a powerful Psyker. For Alpharius and Amigan, their special power seems to be making Demi Primarchs that could act as their body doubles. Occasionally, they would choose an especially tall and skilled Alpha Legionnaire to be granted extra strength by the Primarchs. That Legionnaire would then be given a copy of Alpharius and Amigan's armor and would fight in their place. This process was difficult and was rare, as if it was easy, they would turn the whole Legion into OP Demi Primarchs. The chosen Alpha Legionnaire would be powerful, able to tear through other Space Marines, however would not be able to match another Primarch. For example, Gulliman killed one, and Gilliman ain't exactly the best fighter out there. So what do we know for sure? We know that Alpharis is dead. We know that Amigan is a loyalist, and is attempting to use his corrupted legion for the good of the Emperor. And we know that I am the greatest Warhammer lore YouTuber out there. And that does us for today guys, the lore and story of the Alpha Legion and their twin Primarchs. In regards to the Magical Minis that you may know about from watching my videos, in the spirit of transparency, there's been a small delay with the 3D printing of those, as there was some miscommunication which led to some quality issue. Only one dollar- <coughs> Alright, there's your history on the um, Alpha Legion. Now, like I said, a lot of people have been asking to bring back uh, the Space Marine Week, Space Marine What If, so that's what I did. Here they are. Now... As for their tradition, I still gotta look that one up, unfortunately. And how they make the region. So, pretty much, let's just say the Alpha Legion was actually recruiting. But they said that their ways, when they got back, when they got to Japan, because, like I said, they needed to separate their men from chaos. However, in where their leader, you already know his name, pretty much knew that the Ooh, that one planet was going to be immune to both chaos and light. Like, so he knew that coming to Japan on Earth, this world's Earth, was actually a pretty fucking idea. Because, 
as one, there's no chaos, nor is there any, any light. Because Japan is more of a shade of gray. And because there is no such thing as good or evil between the, between the three. I mean, the three the people. They actually would go against each other either way. So pretty much... Hush, their leader decided to go fuck it and literally just let's get there. However, they kept their ways very secretive for a long period of time. At least until now. Now, I already know half of you are probably saying right now, but Dylan, what do you mean until now? Well, until now, I mean, they, they decided to show their... Their faces, but mostly people would think that they're, they're a member of a different country faction, and, but really they are not. So pretty much, uh, they still kept everything a secret, but they kept their location, their origin, everything a big hush hush. That's uh, because some of the ultimate, some of the marine, means like I said, turned chaos, and they, they don't want people to suffer the same fate. Luckily for Izuku, who jo who actually was running away at home because as everyone one treated him like shit because he was quirkless. One of the space marine is also known as I'm gonna say Hasashi, yes, Hasashi and this one is a space marine, found out about this and became enraged. H saw Inko and literally just cut her in half. And even though he was a K he was sibling of chaos. He knew that abusing children was not fucking right. In fact, it was the opposite of right. So he killed her, and All Might was actually angry at the Ultramarine, at the Alpha Legion. But the Alpha Legion did not give two fucks. So they took Izuku in. And even though All Might declared that he was his child, but Izuku, who did not want to go to him, and wanted to actually feel, feel safe. If, which put a fucking big ass repu nasty reputation on the UA Academy. I mean, so when I'm thinking of that, I'm just thinking, ah, dumbass. And that's where this, this show starts. So now we got Izuku, who has joined the Alpha Legion. But remember, the Alpha Legion is not well. Well, no, and due to their origins being also not no, not so known, I'm going to say Izuku went through their ways. And like I said, I don't know what their ways are. We don't know what how they go through trials and all that. But let's just say for Izuku, who showed courage to actually stand up against his father, or at least he's go through so much pain, that he was recommended it. Which shocked a lot of people, because Hasashi is a cruel... Cool one. Like, he actually shows no remorse and doesn't show that much pity. Especially when it comes to humans. But he pitied Izuku because, as for some reason, Izuku, Asashi, Izuku managed to do the impossible and make him feel something, which is a big part of his taking. So, when Izuku took care of that incident, and he pretty much just minded his own business for quite some time. All the legions did, in fact. So, a couple of years has passed, and I'm going to say Izuku, good, and this one is probably like, I'm going to say 20. Me at the time, because due to ooh, the, the Marines that could do the impossible, Izuku joined the Marines and was training under Hasashi at the age of 15. At the age of 15, but was raised by the other children at the age age of five so pretty much he went through many things <coughs> but after that he pretty much much became their, their member and also well, the leader of the set of space marines you know who who pretty much made him second in command because izuku was actually well trained and actually had pretty well a ways of fighting and also showed a cold blunted say way but also has a sassy attitude towards other Primarchs, which they have encountered multiple times. Izuku and his men and always encountered some fucking bullshit. Mostly, they would have to go out 
out in the world and take make sure that Earth was protected because, well, it became their home, and he knew that these bastards or other legions would try to turn them into the Empire or, or try to submit them to their will. Hill. So he made sure that both Chaos and Ultra Chaos and Emperor keep the fuck out. So we now start with Izuku, who is going to a planet and it. And the planet is known as, uh, I'm going to say it's a random planet. And it's been, actually no, they decided to go to Mars, because then this is when they find out that their homes are being flooded, that the place is being holded by a, by a marine camp. And I'm gonna say this one is. I'm gonna say a. Let's just say it's ultramarines because, like I said, the Empire here is still known, owned, but it's not known to this Earth. And knowing how they work, they would probably want to spread it to mankind. However, for our Izuku has direct orders to make sure that never fucking happens. So Izuku goes there with a full weapon and pretty much well, looks like the only one who showed up. Mind you, due to their due to the Alpha Legion being well known and being pretty much like, wait, whose side are you on moments? Izuku showed oh that he was on nobody's side. So they decided to actually So they do help the Empire, but for a price. Yes, they became the Minotaur. They decided to become Minotaurs because they would help both good and evil. Sounds fair. There it is. Sounds fucking fair if you ask me. And Izuku did not give two flying fucks about anyone. So pretty much when Izuku got there, he sees the Ultramarines. And they see him. Wait, was it Ultramarines? Yeah, it was Ultramarines. And pretty much this is when they just see Izuku. And mind you, Izuku... Who is a a space Hulk? Now, for those who don't know what a space Hulk is, is the best way to say it for you guys is a freaking giant tank of a man, or at least that's what they think Izuku is. But really, he's just really fucking tall. All that even makes a space Hulk looks like a makes a space Hulk look like a midget. Even if he tried. So pretty much, they see him. And this is when one of the Ultramarines actually come near, come to him, but they have their weapons pinned at him. Mostly because, like I said, or more like what Major Kill said, they're not really liked. So this is when Izuku, who goes to them, and you just hear him say, Why are you here? What do you mean? This location. On Earth. It's, le it's Alpha Legion territory. What are you doing here? Here. We could ask you the same thing. Answer my question. I'll answer yours. Very well. The Ungod Emperor has sent us here because we've been sensing a lot of chaos here. here. Have you not checked if it was one of us? We would if we knew that you all were here. here. But you all disappeared. Of course we disappeared. The chapter master wanted to make sure we are not known, and wants to make sure that the Legion is a big hush hush. He doesn't want anyone thinking that you all exist. It's a safety protocol, you could say. So what? He does not trust us, the Legion? No. He hates it. More like he just doesn't trust you all. You are a threat. How are we the threat? You really think you'll let people not? I worship if the Empire willingly. Well, this is when he's this is when one of them says he's got a point. Like, Seriously, you? What? We would have tried to slaughter them anyway because we would accuse them of heresy. And so would a line guard, the Black Templars, or anyone who's very religious, dude, even the Grey Knights. Besides, look at the big... And besides, what can we do? You think we stand a fucking chance against the Alpha Legion? They literally have no honor, 
no code. They could kill us with one swipe, like with their weapons, if they wanted to. Izuku's thinking in his head, smart guy. Are you actually suggesting that we just let these heretic things run around for no reason? You're even admitting you're calling them a heretic, even though we have no exact proof that they are heretics. We have orders. Yeah, we have orders to scout, not um, run around like a bunch, bunch of freaking children convincing someone to pretty much let's admit to the God Emperor. Besides, they could have their own, uh, own problems. This is what Izuku's thinking. He's got a point. Wait. Besides, our mission is simple. We scout out the area. No. And it could make our job easier if he tells us the information. Are you actually going to ask this Alpha Legion and give us information about their world? Will you? Hmm. Fine. As long as you stay on this planet and this planet only. And only come on our planet for a damn good reason. Of course. You can't be serious, Chapter Master. I am damned serious. So get over it. In this one... And pretty much Izuku tells them about this world and what they are. Huh. That actually makes sense. What do you mean? If we had people like Quarks working for the Empire, it would be a disaster. What do you mean? We could use that. At what cost? Cost. Cost. Mr. At what cost? Well, exactly. Sleep. Besides, we are not going to let some innocents join the Marines. Besides, we don't know what these quirks could do and what would happen if, the, if we give them the holiness of the Emperor or make them space marines. You ever thought of that? This is a different galaxy. This ain't the Empire. And like he said, it's under Alpha Legion protection. And he's allowing us to literally set up a base at Mars. So don't push it. Shit, Katsuki. You're not a chapter master. You're a private. Remember that. Yes, sir. And this one, he's Bako walks off. My deepest apologies. Just keep your pet on a leash. Understood. But you have every rights to doubt us. I can't even blame you, really. Dude, can you not? Well, would you blame... I mean, if you saw us, would you be love, Lynn Dubby? We didn't really show up without... We didn't even know this place was under under your protection. I get that a lot. This one he hears, there's Izuku Midori. Izuku, go to base. Izuku the base, report. Report. One of the Alpha Legion, and it's confirmed that... earned that the, court, the people of Quartz are using in chaos magic. Damn it. Damn it. Which side? Um, League of Villains, sir. <sighs> Tell the men to get ready. Hey, understood. But where's this? What are they going to do? They're going to attack the at UA Academy, sir. Or they're going to slaughter her children. I'm on my way. Hey. <laughs> Mind if we ask? Apparently we found out that some elite, some group called the League of Villains are using chaos magic, but we don't know what for. Do you need our help? No. Stay? No. It'd be wise if you guys stay up here. here. I get the, the stretch. It's not that. What if other chaos marine, chaos ships pop up on Earth and do God knows what, or teleport to it? We need to make, you guys need to make sure that this, that doesn't happen. This one is, this one, the chapter master of the Ultramarines are thinking, oh, smart guy. Very well. I can see you're your idea. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Alright, let's
us get going. This is when pretty much Izuku managed to get back on Earth and pretty much managed to get there. And he contacts his chapter master. This is when Izuku comes across more of them. And actually, this is when he gets to you. This is when he gets to USJ with a couple of Marines. Jeez. And this is when, and pretty much he hears from, I'm gonna say a random student saying, "Hey, I didn't know you had fake villains. What? Oh shit, they ain't fake. Get down!" And this is when Izuku's men pop up. And this is when they just see chaos as villains. Blood for the blood god! Ah, oh, great. These assholes. Mind you, Izuku's men stuck to the shadows. So pretty much they made sure that they're, they're not well known. But this is when one of the Chaos Marines tries to charge, but Izuku, who orders his men to pretty much snipe down. Oh. All right. And this is when they start going. All right, men, and protect the children. And this is when the Alpha Legion pretty much surround on the children and put their guns out. This is when more of the blood, a demons of, demons of the blood god pretty much start attacking and pretty much showing no remorse and no of mercy. But the luckily the the Ultramarine, luckily the Alpha Legion, and pretty much showed a little to no mercy and fought against good and evil. Izuku, who uses a, I'm going to say a laser rifle, and starts using his, his saw oh, axe, I think that's what they're called? Yeah, saw axes. And pretty much started cutting them down like a bunch of freaking tin tinfoil. And showing little to no mercy, because he doesn't know mer mercy. Now, pretty much, they start shooting them down, and this is when, and pretty much, watch this is when they say, Release the Nomu! And this is when the Nomo pops up, but it's covered by chaos. Izuku bluntly is thinking, what the hell is that thing? I've never really seen that. This is when in the chap, one of the men say, uh, sir? Ah, uh, yeah, I see it too. This is a new one for me. Me as well. i never seen any these. This is when pretty much the Nomo attacks. And pretty much Izuku, wielding an axe, saw, saw axe and a laser pistol, pretty much charges in and starts shooting the damn place down. Like a freaking maniac. And pretty much this is when it starts going to hand to hand because the laser rifle was knocked out of his hand by the Nomu. So when the Nomu attacked and killed, when he start, was about to kill, Il Izuku, This is when Izuku pretty much managed to keep Abe on fighting and put the axe right to his side. But this is when also Izuku shouts a dagger right into the Nomu's head and just breaks it. it making the Nomu pretty much a fucking nincompoop. This is when pretty much he said, this is when Izuku Shigaraki says under his voice, Horus is not going to be happy about this. Kuragiri, let's go. But sir, what about the rest? They don't stand a chance against the Alpha Legion. Besides, Horus would have some ideas for them. Izuku's thinking his head. Horus? That name sounds familiar. Come. And this one pretty much they leave. This is when pretty much one of them, them goes to Izuku. How many were lost? None, sir. Er, good. But how many wounded? Five or six. Five or six are wounded, sir. No dead. That's what I like to hear. Here. What about the children? A couple of them have fought with us, but some of them are wounded. Give them first aid. Of course. Of course. Medic! He, he's approving! Of course. And this is when pretty much he is going to the leap, going to the teacher. Thanks. We couldn't have stopped done that without you, of course. What are these things? You'll know if we need if you need to. 
they attacked my students. All you need to know is, shoot, they're not villains. Not anymore. They're creatures. They're no longer human. That's all you need to know. As for this Nobu, I have no fucking idea. I'll have to take it to the back. I'll have to take it to the boss. May I ask why you helped us? You alpha mercenaries don't really have a reputation. Should have held the bad guys. We go wherever the coin needs us. And whenever a rival mercenary group comes in and tries to, to do something that we're not okay with. I see. Alright, then, Eraserhead. You know me? Yes, we know you. We know more about you than you think. Especially since you're the husband of President Mike. This is when Aizawa was thinking he knows way, way disturbingly too much. Not for a normal person either. May I ask why did you help? Alright then. I will take my students and get going. That would be wise. But we must see if any of them are wounded. How bad are they? Not too bad. Then. This one, Kartagiri, I mean this one, Dinky, use a lot of electricity. Dinky, huh? Alright. I guess anything's possible. What brought you here? We were doing a field trip, but that's about it. <laughs> you okay, Dinky? Yeah, I'm fine. <sighs> Nothing that my mom didn't do worse. Your mother? Yeah, don't really have a good relationship with her. No one has a good relationship with anybody, no matter how much we try to hide it. <laughs> well, you already know who I am. The name's Dinky. Yup. See you around, kid. I got a feeling we're gonna bump into each other a couple of times. I got that feeling too. I guess it's not a me thing, huh? No. Well, we will bump into each other. And hopefully, as friends. <laughs> Likewise. And this is when Izuku leaves. This is when Izuku... This is when pretty much he gets a call from the chapter master. <laughs> chapter master. I heard what you did. Good work. What can you tell me about the situation? The situation went to shit. Chaos Marines attacked. They were obviously Horus' men. Blood for the blood god, they said. I was truly hoping that wasn't them. Thank you for the information. No problem. Anyway, this is when Izuku and his men get back to their base. And they decide to make a base random. They always move to different base to base. Where's the base now? Is that your house? Seriously? Why my house? House of all places. Because it would be the last place they look. And plus, Asashi wanted to talk to you. Of course. This is when Izuku goes to Hasashi. He at the new bit at the other base. You wanted to see me? Yes, yeah, sit down. He sits down. Anyway, I heard you bumped into Horus. Yes. And you handled it pretty well. I did what I had to. That's good to know. The chapter master wants you... <clears throat> Ooh, to go in and uh, help you in. 
Seriously? Yes, Nezu decided to hire us. He found out who we are, but he also knew a lot of things. Wait, are you saying he doesn't know about our origin? He knows that we're mercenaries. That's it. I see. Anything you should tell us? Sir, I wasn't expecting you guys to actually want to join. I wasn't expecting this. But why are we helping now? Normally we help make help them. them. That may be, be true, but also it's because of the safety protocols. Safety protocols? Yes. Nezu wants to know more about us, but he also wants to see us how we fight. Well, all right then. Looks like I'm helping some kiddos. Yes, and see if you can't. And see to make sure that they stay there. Here, you don't want any recruitment? Not yet. If you have to recruit them, you can. Alright? Got it. This one is who leaves. Where's your way? Down the hall. By the way, you'll be working with someone else. Who? We've got contact from the Ultramarine. They'll be helping on our side too, because if Horka, this, because if Horkos is involved, this is gonna be bloody. <sighs> Very well, sir. This is when he gets to the U.S. This is when he decides to get the U.S. and he just says, "You gotta be fucking kidding me!" He, <sighs> you didn't tell him. Wait, you didn't tell them? I thought you told him. This is when the chapter masters say, Wait, you didn't tell them? I thought you told I thought oh, you told Izuku. Chapter master? I mean, chapter master? Boss? Is this when they both say, Care to explain? You will be working with each other until things... Well, are you kidding me? I gotta work with this dumbass? Who are you calling dumbass? Yes. Well, who else? No, screams, Oh, I'm a frickin'... Gendemi God who acts like a I'm a freaking big bastard who who has a dick dick that is too small to impress anyone. Oh why you little that's enough, both of you. What is with you two? We used to know each other in school. Wait. Hey, you know this guy Bakugo? Once I knew him. Can't believe you joined. I can't believe you joined a bunch of Chaos Marines. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Don't you start with me with that Chaos crap. Your precious father failed to see someone betraying him. Oh, you son of a... Enough! Off, both of you. Oh, yes, Chapter Master. Whatever, boss. Are you... you like... you okay with him calling us boss? Calling you boss? Well, we're technically our mercenary group, so we might as well, well embrace the mercenary ish ness. Mercenary ness ness? You got a better idea? You gotta say it? Uh, nope. Good. Anyway. Is there any downside? Anyway. 
like I said, you two are going to be working together. Especially now, oh, you two need to forgive each other. Forgive this pedophile? No, you did not. Huh. Well, my butt didn't really scream, hey, I want it in. And enough. Oh, I told you a thousand times. That was my, my fucking father. And how are you any better than him? Will you two let us finish our, our conversation, our orders before you start fighting each other? Sorry, Chapter Master. Fine, boss. Uh, he's gonna give me that attitude for a week now. Oh. Anyway, I got this one. Hasashi says, "Yo." And why did? Okay, Mister. Why didn't you tell him? I thought you were. Ow. Hasashi. Yeah. Uh, why didn't you tell Izuku that he's gonna be working with this man? Wait. I thought you already told him. You really think he's going to listen to me now? Well, don't answer that question, okay? I get it. You don't like the idea. This one he says, I can't believe I'm saying this. Look, you don't like me. I don't like you. Ooh, but we gotta get off for this. Just act like we give a shit for now. Says we got a chapter to work with. Deal. Let's go. This is when they go in. Once they get in. Once they also got to the location, when they get in class, and this one Nessie says, Hello! And who is this? My name is <coughs> he's an acquaintance. Ibakugo hey, looks at him. Shut up and just follow. Yes, I am one of the members of the mercenary group. I see. Well, come on in, you two. We are glad to have some students. Wait. What? He looks at the... They look at, at their their boss and the chapter master. <laughs> just get going. Get going. They just push him along. Go on, go on. This is bullshit. I can't believe I'm agreeing with you, Izuku. Huh, what happened to Deku? The Deku I knew, who died when he became a Chaos Marine. Oh, shut the fuck up. A boom boom boy. I no longer. Maybe no better. I know I'm no better. I just wish we were on different terms. <sighs> this is when he's like, just starts walking with them, and this is when he says, "Is hello there, and this will be the location. This will be the place you'll be staying. This is where you'll be learning." 
And, um, aren't you gonna, I don't know, take off your armor? Sorry, safety protocols. All the members of the Alpha Legion must wear their armor for protection reasons. What, your dick is too small? No, you stupid rat. We don't trust you. You might steal it. And this is when Aizawa says, All right, that's enough, Nezu. I know you're curious about out them, but it's rude to pretty much just ask about something they are not trust us with. Are you sure you're not in charge, Aizawa? You look like you're the brains of the people. Well, <laughs> oh, God, no. Well, I'm too lazy for that. At least he's honest. I've never seen you here. Uh, oh, this is my, uh, apprentice. This Mako guy's able to look like apprentice? <laughs> Shut up. But keep it moving. Yes, I am his apprentice. His name is Mushi. Bakugo gives him a look like Mushi. He realized Aizuku's having a kick for it. Yes, um, Baba, my name is Mushi. He, Aizuku, he wants to step up, stomp on the toe, but he knows he can't. Okay, Baba and Mushi. He, I suppose your names are. Why don't we start, uh, going, get going, okay? Right! Hey, why don't you catch up? I need to make sure my apprentice just makes sh to tells him that we're not fighting against you. He has a temper shorter than a dynamite fuse. Gotcha! Uh, this one, Izuku. This one, they both leave. <coughs> Mushi! Ibaba! Ah! Huh? What the fuck type of name is Baba? But, well, who's the one who came up with the name Mushi? The obviously me! Why can't we just tell him our origin? Think of the consequences. Use your brain if you have one in there. Hey, I'm not stupid. But really? Hey, you thought... Uh, the Tooth Fairy was real. Yeah, and you tell you ruined it for me. Hey, this is when they hear, okay. <laughs> they hear laughing. This is when Izuku says, Chapter Master, how long you been there? Um, who's Chapter Master? I'm Bob. Don't pull that bullshit on me. Hey, yeah, that's not gonna work on, yeah, that's not gonna work on Dil, I mean, Izuku. Oh. Why? Doing this again to gain their trust. Now, oh, go with them. Right. He's going go on purpose, like, so he tricks Baco. Wow! Asshole. Oh, thank you. Who? Uh. Wait, I thought I told you, ooh, Chapter Master, to stay on Mars. Technically, I don't take orders from you. No, but you could at least... It wasn't really an order. I was just asking you to stay there. My old chapter's up there. There isn't that not enough. Besides, I'm curious of this humanity's world. <sighs> Doesn't cause any trouble. You're the one to talk! Uh, do I really need to explain how many times you killed innocent carrot? And it's because you thought they had the heresy? <laughs> this is when... And Baco says, regrettably, he has a point. However, you guys are not even worse than the Lion Guard or the Black Templars or something. Huh. Anyway, let's go to our class. Right. When we get when they get there, this is when they walk into class 1A. And Dinky says. Hey, you're that th you're those guys that saved us. Wait, I've never seen you before. Oh, my name is uh, Mushi. I mean, my name is Mushi. This is Baba. That's not your names. Is that like? He's right. That's not. That's our middle names. Apes. Well, actually, my middle name. His is his. That's his real name. His last name is also B B B and Gumball. Baka looks at him and I'm like, I want to kick your ass! 
<laughs> Wait, did you invent the gumball? No. Oh. Well, anyway, my name is Dinky. That's Kas that's Karashima. Karashima with a hate with a hated look. What's his problem? Um, oh, he just doesn't trust you guys. He thinks that you guys are villains in disguise. I don't know, music was thinking, well, technically we are. Okay. Say that we... Will you believe us when we say we mean you no harm? Let's do this. <sighs> well, looks like we're going up the circus. Let's just go. Oh, this is... What are we doing anyway? Oh, we're learning blood quarks. Eh? Eh? This one Baco whispers to his ear. What's a blood quark? Uh, let me make some acquaintances for my, uh, with Gumball here. <laughs> this is when they walk out. <sighs> you didn't answer my question. What's a blood cork? Seriously, Bakugo? Oh, how long were you gone? Oh, I'm sorry. I was recruited by them when we were kids. We were both recruited with, by the chapters when we were kids. It's, how do you even know? We never left Earth. Oh. That's how we know. I suppose that makes sense. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Alright, let's just go. Let's see what we can do. <sighs> I suppose anything is possible. And this one, Izuku walks back in. Yep, uh, sorry about that. We had to make sure he knows. He knows, he knows, and I know he knows, and I know he knows, he knows, he knows, and I know he knows, and I know he knows. Sorry about that. This is one Bakugo says, all right, um, we had to make some things. Huh. All right. It's good to know that we got that. Huh. All right. Uh, let's get going. This one they start getting going. This is when they learn about blood quarks, and Bako found it more fascinating. Izuku, all they hear from Izuku is... <laughs> and Izuku, Bakugo, smirks, and just bumps him. <laughs> uh, pay 
attention. I already know about the blood quarks, damn it. That's why I fell asleep. Okay then, Izuku. What it was the first ever blood quark? Oh, that's fucking easy, dipshit. It's Reaver Quark. The ability to control blood and manipulate it to any weapons or forms that you wish to have. Baku, Aizawa looks at the test. That's correct. Nice one. How did you? I'm a light sleeper. Oh, so you were paying attention. Then why didn't you write it down? He look. He holds his hand up. Oh, right, your hands are huge. So this is when Karashima makes an assault. <laughs> How do you masturbate then? They're probably too big. Hey, it makes your pecker look teen small. Oh. Karashima! What? I'm just being honest. This, my dick is better than your ego, that's for damn sure. <coughs> <laughs> oh, I call bullshit on that. Really? You really want to have a dick mandarin contest? This is when Bakugo says, Don't you fucking dare. Here. What? What's wrong with a little dick mangering contest? No. Oh, absolutely not. No dick mangering contest. But no. Butts. You little fucker. Huh. Are we rude? Mood. I'm just me. Ah, bullshit. It. <laughs> Anywho, sorry about him. He doesn't. He's just well grumpy. Uh, if I someone tried to make fun of my dick, I'd be grumpy too. He's a good son to look. Shut up. So, what now? Well, now, you two, due to you two literally being well-known among the facility, I sense a butt coming. You do. I, after this, we want to do a versus versus, but I'm not going to be one teaching you. Let me guess, big, dumb, and round decided he'd be nice enough to teach us because he'd think... He said, we need heroes! Is that my, is that correct? I didn't know that all my was teaching. I can hear his big fucking footstep. That's coming this way. It's thinking like a thump, thump, thump. It's louder than my fucking boots! Boots. Lose some weight! Ain't all might. Bakugo prying his best not to laugh. That's, <clears throat> that's not very polite, Idizoku. Fuck you and fuck all might. He could suck my dick if he could. This is when Bakugo just, just drags him in. <sighs> Why did you hate All Might? I, wow, I always hated All Might. The only reason I acted like I give a shit is because Inko. Now she's dead. Inko's dead? Yes. Now let go of my arm. <sighs> we are talking about this later. We are not doing shit. What are you two talking about? <sighs> oh, he wanted to know what type of porn I watch. I did not. And this one Bakugo smacks him in the head. And, and Bakugo, Izuku starts punching him in the jaw. Okay, this is when uh, All Might walks in. I am here, walking in like a normal person. Immediately, Izuku nearly shot All Might's head off. Shit! <sighs> Whoops. Sorry. Wait. Hey, dude, you nearly shot All Might's head off with that thing. Give me that. Hey, give that back. Heck no. Now I'm trying to learn how to aim. Okay. Until I learned how to aim. Oh, that's rich coming from you. Well, it's the truth. Until you learn how to control it, you are stuck with them, okay? Fine. Now give me back my blaster. No! Well, chokes on you. He holds out a pistol. I got a backup. Well, I'm gonna... Actually, I should just ask you to give me all your weapons. That ain't fucking happening. This one Karashima said... This one Dinky says... That's... That's actually pretty cool. How did it do that? Do what? Incinerate the wall? This one, Class 1B, looks through, and they just see the hole in the wall. Um... 
Uh, did something happen? Isoko? Uh, ooh, this one all my says. Today we're doing villain versus villains. Please do not shoot the teach the innocent teacher. <laughs> innocent my ass. That's, I heard that. At this is when Izuku Who just walks out. I mean this is when Izuku just walks with them. Let's just sit down. Well, I got anything better to do. Of course you don't. This is when Izuka starts walking out and he just starts minding his own business once again. But this is when pretty much they get to the versus versus. Let's go. This is when pretty much they start going. <sighs> they get to the one versus one thing. Okay, today it is Bakugo and Izuku versus Dinky and Karashima. Wow. That's what Izuku's thinking. That's kind of an unfair fight. This, actually, no. They both of them think, this is a fucking beyond unfair fight. What the fuck can they do? This is when Dinky says, um, what can we do? Who? Why not them go against you? Ooh, that sounds like a wonderful idea. Yeah, let us fight you, All Might. <clears throat> no. Oh, come on, Bob. Oh, come on. On Gumball. Nope. Hope I know what you'll do. You'll break his head, break his leg, and break every bone in his body, making him wit. He was killed by Ayanomu. Just one little finger. That's all I'm asking. No. Oh, that's what All Might says. Why does he hate me so much? He thinks that all you heroes like he thinks heroes like you guys should know that your place and think and he's that showing you guys can bleed will show that the world that anyone one can sprite fear. <laughs> Just one pop up is all I'm asking. And nope. Oh. Oh, damn. Does he hate me that much? He tried to shoot you in the head, All Might. He hates you. But still, you'll have to go up against them. Um, so who's the villains and who's the heroes? You two are the heroes. Ow. This one, all my, this one, Izuka says, "Are you deaf, dumb, stupid, or just that ugly?" Hey, do we scream, heroes? Look at our fucking armor. Bakugo's armor looks heroic. That's because he's a porn star. Hey. Well, you are! With a dick that small, oh, you can probably get any woman that's the size of a freaking gnome! It's Bakugo's in the middle finger. Fuck you, Izuku. No thanks, I'm a power top. Ah! <laughs> oh, boy. It's still gonna stay the same. Okay? 
Eh. Okay. So when do we start? Now, I guess. After this, and they... This is when I get to the position. He's so good to sit down. <laughs> Aren't you gonna do anything? What the fuck can they do? We have armor that literally can... It's almost impossible to break. Like, guns that can do times of damage. Like, freaking weapon that's a chainsaw axe mix. Actually, I just have a regular sword. Pussy. He, no, I don't like messy kills. You're still germaphobic? And yet you joined the Ultramarines. Who faces God knows what? I'm not that big of a germaphobe. Bakugo, you overreacted when I accidentally sneezed and caught the flu. You thought I had the freaking Black Plague and you wore a hazmat suit. I didn't want it. That's germaphobia. Oh. oh, like you have no room to talk. Look, you let a bot me to keep accuse me of pretty much bullying you. Which you were. What happened to us? We grew up. That's what happened. I miss the old times. God, I don't. No, I meant when we were friends. Before this shit. Well, you don't get what you want. This is when the ultimate, the chapter master and the the leaders of the Alpha and the Ultimate are like, oh, come on, Izuku, just get along with him. <sighs> he has your stubbornness, is Hasashi. What did I do? What the fuck did I do? I just took him in. And I don't know why you're putting point fingers at me. Hey. <sighs> what? Wanna grab a pint later? I thought you didn't like drinking. No. Boy, the chapters are right. We need to forgive each other about the past. Fine, but you're buying. Fine. Fine. Even I have no damn money. Well, around these parts, you need money. And money is everything. To an alpha the legion. Seriously? Everything? Yep. This is when Izuku sees Dinky. And he is just now spaced off because Dinky's costume does not look like it's something for heroes. Izuku, why don't we come up with a plan? Moochie? Moochie! Hey! Wow, what? 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 What are you looking at? He points at, at Bakugo. Oh. What the fuck is he wearing? I don't know, but I don't like it. He's a good jumps. Goes there. All right, heroes, get going! Man, this is embarrassing. Why do I have to wear this? Don't worry, bro. You're not the only one. Kashima, your clothes don't... You are wearing pants. I'm forced to wear a dress and a skirt. Man, I'm forced to wear a skirt. This is when Izuku is right, behind, right in front of them. Ah, villain... Da, 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 da. Shut up for a minute. What the fuck is this? What? This! Why do you look like a porn star? Blame the girls! I'm gonna kick your asses later. What did we do? This! Isn't this a dress code? Oh, like, what the fuck is this? You're a hero school, not a porn, porn school. What the fuck? This one Bakugo's thinking, eh, he's not wrong there. I've seen some heroes that do not look appropriate in front of kids. Here, this one Izuka takes off his cape and starts wrapping it around him. There you go. Thanks. Are you going to willingly surrender? I can't fight in this. Well, not in the costume. So yeah, I surrender. He looks at Izuku. Izuku looks at Karashima. I don't. All right. I, this is when, I'll, this is when uh, Karashima says, Unbreakable! And she goes, Unbreakable, though. This is when Izuku says, Serious? Bop! Bop! Clink! And this is when Izuku just bops him in the head, knocking him out. Serious bop. This is when the Zubaku says, Did you really just get that from One Punch Man from Saitama? Well, you got a better idea to make them think we have... Well, you got a better idea to case fuck you to them? Um, villain team wins? I'm out. Hey, where am I going? You are getting a better costume. Whose fucking idea was that? Mina. Who's Mina? She is. 
This is why he's made, this is why Bot Dinky points at the girl with the pink skin. Uh oh. Mina! I'm going to kick your pinky ass! <laughs> Get back here! Here! With Bakugo. Hey, how come Bak Izuku hates people treating people like strippers? I am gonna shove your horn so far up your ass, you'll be wishing that the moon was there, was not there! Or please have mercy! No! Oh, get back here, you freaking heretic! Let me smite you! Is that a chain? Izuku, is that a warhammer? Yes! Get away! Why? We can't kill students because of perverted reasons? Yes, I can! Get back here! See, Zuka! Wait, this one he says, Moochie! E? Or was it Bubba's? Yeah, Bobby. Bubba? Yeah, Bubba! This is when Baku says, Bubba! Oh, get back here, Mo! Me now! Moochie, help! No. With and the leader of the line, the leader of the Ultramarines, and the leader of the Alpha Marine, Alpha Legion, they look at each other. And look at Hasashi. What? But why do you keep looking at me? What did I do? Who? Does he always have this finish? He hates people treating like people like strippers. <sighs> this one, Izuku finally catches Mina. <sighs> gotcha, you little shit. Please have mercy. <sighs> Let go of my hammer, Merbuck Muchi. Nope. I know what you're gonna do. You are not gonna crush her skull with that thing. <sighs> Just one little bump. No. No. Oh. Ah! Oh, my little help! He's stronger than he looks! <laughs> Amina, run! I don't know how long we can hold him! This is when Mina runs. Oh, no, you don't! <laughs> wow! Oh, and this is when... And the whole class is now being dragged by Izuku because they're holding him by the waist. Bakugo saying, how are you so strong? Oh, God, this is when All Might says, help! Oh, and Izuku's still chasing Mina. Poor girl. Oh, get back here! Please have mercy! This one, Dinky says, uh, can you please stop chasing her? Izuku looks at Dinky. Fine. And Izuku stops, which flings the Bakugo and all my, my two clock to Nezu's door. <laughs> How is he so strong? Oh, you don't want to know. Anyway, pause break. Okay, I'm back. Now, a couple of months has passed, and Izuku has gone near there. But this is when, pretty much, it's now Valentine's Day. And Izuku... Temporary pause break. Okay, we are back. Yes, we. Shadow's here. Yep, you can already tell that Shadow's here, so pretty much we're going to be trying our bet. Yes, and look at do doing it. Pretty much making what if this from now on. But, uh, she walked into the what if that I was doing. Luckily, I'm still doing it. So, where was I? Ah, yes. It's Valentine's Day for Izuku and the people. All of you, so you yeah, Bakugo said, and this is when Bakugo is being waved upon waves of fangirls and fan and boys. And Bakugo is like, uh, 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 Izuku like, ha, 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 ha. Izuku. This is when he says, as Baba help. Nope, Mushi, you got this. You got the man. You got it all. Oh, Mu Baba, I swear to God, if you don't help me right now. Uh, what am I gonna supposed to say? Hey. <laughs> ha! You're the one who became a sheep. Oh, really? 
I'm not the only one who's been pestered. What are you talking about? This is when he feels a sh tap on his shoulder. Eh? This is when Dinky's holding a letter. You want me to pick you up at 7 o'clock? Uh, sure. Hey, wait a minute. How are you so smooth with the lady with people? Did you forget? I'm an introvert. Introverts don't need to be smooth with people. We just tell them that we are in into them. Anyway. Hmm. All right. This is when Izuku says. Hmm. All right. Let's see. <laughs> and this is when Izuku's like, all right, I'll go get it. <laughs> Man, I'm a bastard to fall out. Anyway, Izuku. Hello? You there? Oh, for fuck. Shadow is doing it again. Hello? Yeah, I'm here. Oh, wait, you muted yourself? Oh, you don't have to do that. You know that you're at least annoying. Oh, your brother. Gotcha. Anyway, with Izuku who says, All right, I'll go pick you up. up. But remember, Burr, Burr, I'm the one who's accommodating you. Right. This one, Bakuma says, How do you do that? I'm an introvert. We're good at flirting with people. Yeah, but don't you think that a lot of people are going to be jealous? What are you talking about? Millions of people hate me. No, they... Okay, that's a fat-ass lie. Yes, they do. I just got to ask the... I just got to just ask his permission. This is money here. Yeah, you have my permission to date him. How long were you listening? I think... Um... For a while? And you forget. The Alpha Legion doesn't really give a shit. Neither does the Ultramarines. All right, then. What about me? Who did I should I ask out? Why don't you ask out the person who's too shy? I... Oh. Wait, is that... I mean, weren't you always wanting to go near her? She'll say no. All right, then. There you and my take, me taking her. Don't you fucking dare. Then ask her out. Or I'm taking her. This is when pretty much he, Neji goes, Mizuku goes to Najiro. Huh? Oh, Bakugo. Um, hi. Listen, I was wondering. I'll act, I'll go out with you. What? Well, yeah. I heard the full conversation. <laughs> How long were you listening? Let's just say. A. It would have been a day giveaway. A. Hey, Izuku. Bakugo looks at Izuku. I'm not doing anything. Right. Anything. I swear. Uh-huh. All right. This is when Bok think Izuku goes on his their date. However, Izuku still wore his armor. And Dinky wore a fucking fancy ass suit. Now, with Izuku, who pretty much is now mining his own kazoo's axe again, this one he just goes to Dinky and he just sees him wearing a freaking dress that you can easily mistake for a fucking, fucking nice jinking shaft. This is when Izuku just says, Alright. Wait, hello there. There do you need. 
This one, he's, this one, uh, Dinky says, You're wearing your armor? I couldn't find a suit that would fit me. Oh, uh, well, you still look good. But, and I mean, I wouldn't even mind you doing some things to me. Hmm, I'll keep that in mind. This is when Izuku goes with them. So, well, what made you start liking me of all people? I was always into bad boys. Go stupid. Hmm. <laughs> Their date went successfully. And this one they were about to kiss until they hear, BLOOD FOR THE BLOOD GOD! Ow. Good. Wow, really know how to find a ruin a moment. Man. And this one they see more Chaos Marines popping up. <sighs> Wow, you bastards really know how to ruin a moment. Man, this is when Izuku grabs his axe and pretty much the blood, mar the chaos marine attacks Izuku, but Izuku defeats him pretty easily. Wait, um, was that a rival mercenary band? Eh, uh, you could say that. I can't let them find out, but they've been teleporting for weeks now. Where are they going? The real question is, what are they looking for? With Izuku. All right. So, where to? Anyway, where were we? Oh, yeah, this is when Dinky just kisses him. No, no, my parents are gone for a week. And we have the house to ourselves. Oh! <laughs> so, come on. <laughs> come to. Oh, daddy following. Hey, this is when they hear it. But here's what they. When they get there and Izuku starts wanking him, the chapter masters can hear it. Meaning, they, they are not turning it off. And Sashi said, as, aren't you guys going to turn that off? Huh? We can't. And there's no off button on those things. The, com the comms are always on. On. S seriously? <laughs> seriously. You can't tell him to stop? He has his helmet off. Oh, wait, you can actually see what they're seeing? Well, no. Oh, but remember, Izuka has one of those, ho those hovering skulls, meaning, oh shit, we are watching. This one, the chapter map, this one, Bakugo, they also see Bakugo, who is now being dominated. Ah, don't worry. Me, I'll make you a good boy. Bakugo is thinking in his head, this is how I die! <sighs> Poor Bakugo. Oh. Now, with Izuku, oh, and Dinky said, Ooh, how come you weren't taken in the first place? <laughs> you sure you haven't done that before? Oh, no, that's my first time. Izuku thinking, I can't let him know I've done it more than once. That's, that'd be embarrassing. <laughs> you sure your chapter math, your chapter will be okay him for you dating me? I think they don't... I think they're getting more concerned on what they'll think about uh, what. What do you mean? Um, he points at the hovering skull. What is that? That's a camera. We were record... They were recording this? He's a... But Dinky covers himself. Yep. They were recording. They... Anyway, I should probably put on the helmet so I can hear them scold me. Actually, I'm going to put it on speaker. Hello. He's so cool! Oh, yeah? How was he? Hey, you saw the video, Hasashi. Yeah, but but how was he? I was asking Ding Ding. Hey, well, I did yell Daddy more than once. Well, hey! hey. hey I approve. When's the wedding? Wait, wedding? Hey, ow, Dad, the wedding won't happen in weeks. He's, by the way, you should see what's happening to Bakugo. He's being dominated by Nijiro. Wait, oh yeah, I always knew he was a bottom. Oh, with Bakugo. So, you are literally, were a virgin? Shut up. I mean, yes, ma'am, I was a virgin. Then, holy fuck, you did get dominated! How long were you there? Uh, from the start? Are you saying... Oh, you're not the only one who's had that watch. You, we forgot to turn our, off our skulls. Our what? They look at the skulls. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Wait, so they've been listening? Yes, our mercenary band watched the whole thing. Okay. 
Um, are you okay? Let's see what we got. Huh. Okay, that's a little of a BS. Now, with Izuku, who is now just sitting there with a happy, happy look. So. Anyway, this is when a Chaos Marine pops out of their room, destroys their door, and he yells, Blood for the... And Izuku shoots him in the head. <sighs> Seriously? Okay, who are... I'm getting suspicious. Let me say that. They don't look human, and they definitely look like the same armor. You're hiding something. Shit. Um, well, it's kind of difficult to explain. Really? The Nomos we saw didn't look human either. In fact, they looked more corrupted than normal. And these are no ordinary villains. This is when Izuku's saying, damn, now he caught up. But this is when Neji says, hey, you're right. Okay, you two better start talking. Uh, shit. This is more of the, our boss question. How about we just teleport you guys there? Can I at least put on my armor and he put on some clothes before you teleport? Yeah, good. Everyone puts on their armor and clothes and they are teleported to their base. Where are we? Look outside. Dinky and Nanjiro look outside. What? That, 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 that's Earth. Yep. Yep, that's Earth. Where you guys lived. Wait, what? Wait, wait, wait. Okay, explain right now. What is going on? How dare? This is when Bakugo gives him a look like, don't even think about it. Sorry, sir. Okay, can you please explain? Sure, we're space marines. Space ma- what, what's a space marine? Oh, boy. Okay, let us explain in a way so you can understand. A space marine are people... Well, actually, he explains the space marine law. Ooh, Space Marine lore. Or Oh, and he explains the Legion, Alpha Legion, and Baku explains the Ultramarines. So the Ultramarines are like humanity's police force. So the chapters are like. So humanity's chapters are like police officers. Um, uh, think military, but yeah, that's how best way to put it. They and the Alpha Legion are technically are like mercenaries. Yep. Why didn't you tell us? One, you would not believe me without proof. Two, it's kind of impossible to believe. And three, it's impossible to believe. Yep. We kind of believe you from the start because number one, a plasma rifle to the head, a plasma rifle that went through many walls doesn't scream that this is from this world. And plus, look the size of your weapons and armor. They don't scream they're from this place. And also, scales? And your armor doesn't really scream. Look, one of you guys look like those things. No offense. I'm taken. And plus, what is this? This logo, this language, we don't know anything about. The fuck? Oh. This is when Izuka says, I guess that was a giveaway wasn't it yeah <sighs> we're sorry just tell us next time no more secrets okay how about we keep no more good secrets how about that because there are some secrets we can't let you know oh. okay what about the ultramarines that kept attacking us eh? oh, oh 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 you mean um 
Um, Horko... I mean, his man, uh, fuck. What was their name? I can never remember their name. How do you forget their name? We don't really get... We don't really see them that much. As a matter of fact, they rarely pop up. Uh, uh, what was their name? Oh, uh, shit. Get, uh, give me a get, 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 get. Give me a minute. Okay. Hmm. Give me a minute. Where are they? Huh. <laughs> All right, let's see. Give me a minute. Hello, Horus. Here you go. Get that. By the way, shout out once again to Major Kill. This is what he says. Look, they're pretty much Horus, and they're led by a guy named. Those were the Luna Wolves, or once known as the Luna Wolves. Just look at them. Just good luck. Hey, guys and gal. It's no secret that all bold white people in Warhammer are evil. We have Manfred, who ruined Warhammer Fantasy, Archeon, who wanted to ruin Warhammer Fantasy but got carried by Manfred and the Skaven, Lulgar is another such evil character. On the opposite end of the spectrum to this, Sigmar has mighty hair, and so does the God Emperor of Mankind, hence they are the good guys. Horus, the arch traitor, the super douche, is as bold as they come. Then, when you look at the other traitor Primarchs, Lorgar, Mortarion, Alpharius, Angron, and Perturabo, are also all bold. I'm not really sure what point I'm trying to make here other than the fact that boldness is the first step to committing war crimes. Today we'll cover the rise and fall of Horus and his legion. We'll cover their origins, their part in the Great Crusade as well as the Horus Heresy. We'll also look at some of their more badass characters, looking at you Garbiel Loken, and what ended up happening to them. Let's get into it. When the Emperor decided he would milk the Milky Way with his firm yet gentle metaphorical teeth squeezing technique, he realized he needed the help of 20 demigod super soldiers leading 20 legions of less powerful but still OP demigod super soldiers. Hence, he enlisted the help of some immortal female scientists. Well, these hoes aren't loyal, hence just as the demigods, called Primarchs, were born and growing, their mother threw them into the warp and allowed the Chaos Gods, who were naughty entities not super keen on the Emperor, to scatter them across the galaxy. Some were cast off into distant hostile worlds and forced to suck on them wolf teats for nourishment, while others fell on top of private schools and became rich privileged white kids. Horus fell on a planet that was really close to Earth, or Terra as it was called in Warhammer. Now Horus's origins are a little sketchy. He was the first Primarch found and he was found super early. He did land on Chthonia, however he likely spent no time at all there, a few years most before the Emperor found him and brought him back to Terra. This is backed up by the fact that many of his Chthonian born marines either A make fun of his accent because it's the most redneck bogan accent on the planet, or B think his accent is put on because it is that bogan. Whatever the case, Horus doesn't do anything by accident, so it's likely he put on this accent to try and bond with his Chthonian born space marines, as it's likely he would have gotten less respect from them if it was known that he was more or less a Terran Primarch. Whatever the case, Horus spent the most amount of time with the Emperor and was his only Primarch for 30 years. Chthonia would serve to be a great recruiting ground for the 16th Legion, who would earn the name Lunar Wolves after a successful invasion of the Moon. Now, not all Primarchs were made equal. Horus, Gilliman, and the Lion conquered the most planets by far, 
whilst Horus, Sanguinius, and once again the Lion were legendary warriors. In comparison, Primarchs like Lorgo are angry with scrubs that nearly died like 10 times due to their own incompetence and only lived due to plot armor. It's no accident that Horus and the Lion were both mentioned as some of the best warriors and commanders there. Both of them were the top picks for Warmaster, but I'm getting ahead of myself. The Lunar Wolves were quick to join up with Horus and they tore a mighty tear in the galaxy's asshole. See, the Lunar Wolves would go in, completely shred a planet's defenses and military might, and then move on. They wouldn't try to build an empire or convert the planet to the Imperial Truth. Their only job was to remove resistance so that the Imperial Guard and diplomats could go in and do the boring stuff. Hence why the Lunar Wolves were able to conquer so many planets. They didn't waste time trying to convert them to a religion like Lorga, nor did they grind the planets to dust like Angron. They just did what needed to be done and left. Now Horus was a legendary commander, but like all the Primarchs were, and his commanding ability wasn't what set him apart. It was his charisma. Pretty much all the other legions jumped at any opportunity to team up with the Lunar Wolves, and Horus was able to form a bond with virtually all of his brothers, even the retarded ones. It's this same charisma that would be used to convince his super intelligent brothers and their super intelligent sons that selling their souls to the forces of hell and rebelling against the Emperor would be a good idea. The Lunar Wolves helped the Emperor destroy a huge orc empire at the dawn of the Great Crusade, put down a massive hundred world rebellion by teleporting directly into the enemy's command ship as Horus personally slew the enemy warlord. Victory after victory graced the Lunar Wolves. However, it was the victory on Davin which would plant the seeds to the dumb shit fuckery that would commence later on. The planet Davin was easily conquered by Horus, however he was impressed with the populace's savagery and strength, as well as their ability to seemingly accept the Imperial Truth. As such, he allowed the warrior lodges of Davin to become a thing within his own legion, a kind of book club for Astartes from different squads to meet and share brotherhood. A good thing on paper, however it'd be these warrior lodges that the first blossom of heresy would commence. On top of this, the people of Davin were all secret chaos worshippers, and plotted their revenge against the Imperium. Horus would arguably go up against some of the most interesting enemies of the Imperium after this. They fought the equivalent of Skynet on one planet, as well as the Covenant from Halo. At the peak of the Great Crusade, Horus would take part in the Ulanor Crusade, which was the largest Orc army ever discovered in a system. Laughably, the Imperium only needed less than 10 million troops to beat a green-skinned force that also numbered in like the 10 to 20 million. Now if I was writing for Warhammer 40k and I wanted to talk about the largest orc army ever, I would probably give them an army that was at least bigger than the number of combatants in our very own World War 1. You would kind of expect there to be a billion or so orcs on this planet. It's not that impressive if we have real life wars that are way more spicy than this. But alas, the orcs were smashed. Obviously and the Emperor declared his intention to return to Terra and work on a secret project. This project would be the Emperor opening up the Eldar webway for human use, and significantly reducing humanity's reliance on the warp, thus starving the Chaos Gods. This would be a permanent victory against Chaos. However, with his attention on the project and how delicate the project was, he did not want the Primarchs to know and potentially feed that information to Titsnitch by accident or on purpose. Ignorance is a great weapon against Chaos. In his stead, the Emperor declared Horus as the new Warmaster of the Imperium and commander of all the Imperium's armies. Most of the Primarchs were like, sure, whatever. The Lion, one of the only Primarchs who was arguably greater than Horus, did not agree with this, thinking that he himself should be the Warmaster. I second this. The Lion was a Space Knight. Space Knights are cool and should totally be Warmaster. On top of this, the Lion also had an impressive mane. No shit, you know, he was the Lion. Hence, he was certainly a good guy with absolutely zero questionable intentions. However, Horus was now Warmaster, and that was that. And he did a good job of it. Initially. He crushed the powerful evil Xeno race called the Nephilim, and even discovered and violently sodomized the planet that thought it was Terra and had its own god emperor of mankind, who was less of a god and more of a delusional prick who received a bulk to the brain, but was nonetheless an interesting experience. Horus had gone to bring death to Arachnophobia itself, as he landed on a planet nicknamed Murder, along with Sanguinius and Fulgrim, which was full of giant spiders. They literally fought giant spiders, called Mega Arachnids, for six months. Now, that Halo Covenant I mentioned earlier rocked up during this, and they were called the Interrex, and they were a super advanced civilization, more advanced than the Imperium, encompassing multiple Xena races, and they were the sworn enemy of Chaos. They were honestly the perfect ally of the Imperium. So it was none other than Erebus who would ruin everything. Say it with me. Fuck. 
Erebus. See, Horus was very diplomatic. He gave everyone and everything a chance. The false emperor I mentioned before was given three chances to surrender before he was killed. The conflict between the Interrex and Horus was due to Erebus sneaking into one of their museums and stealing a powerful Chaos Blade. The same blade that would turn Horus to Chaos down the track, and whose shards would fail to turn Gilliman to Chaos. With the blade stolen, the Interrex thought that Horus was an agent of Chaos, hence they attacked him and his crew. Hence, Horus destroyed them all. But Major Kill, you said the Interrex were more advanced than the Imperium. How can only a few legions beat them then? Shut your stupid fucking mouth to me before I shave you bald and beat the shit out of you. You beat the shit out of me anyway. Yeah, well now I can justify it, because you'll be evil. Humans are more advanced than Silverback Gorillas. However, if you were locked in a room with a Silverback Gorilla, you would get fucked up. Same situation here. The Imperium might not have reached the end of Pi like the Interrex probably had, but super advanced science doesn't do much when space marines start dropping on your planet from orbit with rocket launch and machine guns. Despite this, Horus expressed regret with the destruction of the Interrex and desired to bring other Xena races into the Imperium as vassals. He really was the greatest of them all. He even refused an offer by the Emperor to rename his legion to the Sons of Horus, as Horus wanted to be humble and not above his brothers. As time went on, the weight of Warmaster grew heavy on old mate Horus. The Emperor had abandoned him and their crusade without telling him why. On top of this, the Biggie also created the High Lords, who would govern the Imperium. It almost seemed like the Biggie was preparing to phase out the Space Marines and the Primarchs once the war was done. Erebus and Lorga had also been talking mad shit about the Emperor to Horus, however despite all this, Horus was still a loyal son, until Davin happened. See, Davin, the planet Horus brought into compliance, did some hectic chaos voodoo and basically corrupted the Imperial Army there, turned them into a bunch of Nurgleite zombies. Rough. Horus rushed back to sort it out, as Primus got pretty pissed off when planets they dealt with suddenly became an issue, and this was a serious issue. I mean, imagine leaving a planet where your mates wave goodbye to return 60 years later and find it full of zombies. Horus fought his way to the Imperial Governor who was wielding the Chaos Blade that Erebus had stolen from the Interrex. The Governor was also a bloated zombie who was surprisingly powerful. The blade he wielded was basically a sentient Nurgle blade hellbent on killing Horus. The two fought, and whilst Horus killed the Governor, the knife was able to cut Horus, poisoning him. Horus returned to his ship, but fell into a coma as his body began to die. The poison was too powerful for Imperial Science to deal with. It's unknown if this was killing Horus because Horus was a little bitch whose soul was already compromised, or if Chaos did indeed have some hectic poison and even someone as incorruptible as Dawn or Gilliman would have also died from this. Gilliman was cut by a blade that was forged out of this blade that mortally wounded Horus, and he shrugged it off due to him being completely incorruptible. You know, no surprises here, Gilliman has hair. Erebus convinced the Lunar Wolves to allow him to take Horus into the Temple of the Serpent, which was a Chaos Temple, no shit, where Erebus entered into Horus's mind and began being a twat. Erebus showed Horus the future, with the Emperor as a god on a golden throne and a dying decaying Empyrean that was against everything they fought for. Whilst this future was to come true, ironically, it was because Horus tried to stop it via letting the Chaos God's finger his bumhole until he prolapsed. Interestingly enough, Magnus saw this happening and also entered into Horus's mind. He told Horus of Erebus's deceit, unmasked Erebus who was posing as a lunar wolf in his vision and told him not to join Chaos. This is the point where I believe that if Horus had resisted Chaos and trusted Magnus, then the poison would have failed and Horus would have lived, likely through Magnus's intervention. The idea of the poison was to get Horus into that temple, it was never supposed to kill him. Even with the manipulation revealed, Horus's own self-doubt and resentment towards the Emperor was enough to allow him to agree to Chaos saving his life and turning against the Emperor. Horus awoke. The last shreds of his hair on his shiny head were gone. He was now Horus, the bold cunt. Horus immediately renamed his legion to the Sons of Horus as a symbolic way of showing his new colours. The crusade continued, however Horus began losing his care and mercy. He became ruthless in his goals and began turning the other legions and their primarchs to his cause. His charisma was once used to save trillions of lives and avert cataclysmic wars. Now it would be used to spark the greatest conflict the galaxy had ever seen since the war in heaven. Lorgar was already a douchebag pedo chaos worshipper. Conrad and Angron were already fucked in the head and thought killing the Emperor would be fun. Fulgur was already corrupted due to the Layer Blade. Perturabra had tons of resentment towards Dawn and the Emperor because he wasn't Daddy's favourite builder. 
He also genocided his home planet and didn't think the Emperor would forgive him for it. Mortarion was angry that the beginning was a Sarka and hid the warp from him, and Magnus had his soul shattered, with only the asshole parts reforming into his main form. Alfaris also listened to some bullshit prophecy by a bunch of aliens and decided to trust them for some reason. So now Horus had his legions, but not all space marine are dicks. In fact, one third of each legion were not willing to betray the Emperor, hence they had to die. Here is where the most interesting space marine characters come into place. Loyalist Astartes in Trader Legions. That one third of those legions was deployed in Master Istvan to deal with a planetary governor who had rebelled and fallen to Slanesh. As the one third were deployed on the planet, Horus and the traders audibly bombed it into oblivion, seeking to wipe them out in one go. However, through the brave efforts of Saul Tavitz, Nathaniel Garo, and Gavriel Loken, this would prove to be a challenge. Garviel of the Lunar Wolves led the Loyalists and Saul of the Empress Children warned them of the orbitable bombing, whilst Nathaniel of the Death Guard escaped to warn the Imperium of Horus' betrayal. With Saul's warning, most of the one third were able to survive the virus bombing and held off the traitors for two entire months. Loken used to be a member of Horus' Mournable, his most trusted advisors, so it was pretty personal for him. Eventually, through overwhelming force and the betrayal of Lucius, the Loyalists were pinned down and Loken lost the duel to Abaddon and the world was once again bombed. Loken would survive this, somehow, and get some pretty hectic revenge. With their Loyalist side purged, the traitors waited for the Imperium's response, and respond they did, with the force of three full Loyalist legions, backed up by another four legions. Legions that were actually secretly traitor, hence the Loyalists, the Salamanders, Iron Hands and Raven Guard, were put on the spit and penetrated hard, creating the Istvan drop site massacre. Horus would then begin to beeline for Terra, becoming more twisted as he went, as each of his brothers slowly became completely corrupted, hence really unstable. By the end of the heresy, everyone was so batshit insane that if it weren't for Perturabo, they likely all would have killed each other before they even arrived at Terra. On the way to Terra, Horus stopped at Molech, the place where the Emperor tricked the Chaos Gods into giving him a power boost. Horus sought that same power boost, but there was a bit of a garrison there as Daddy wasn't super keen on sharing his powers. During this battle, Lehman Russ and his wolves attacked Horus, and despite Horus's chaos boosts, Lehman wounded him and actually had him at his mercy. Lehman, being the Emperor's executioner, should have, you know, executed him, but he hesitated, so Horus took the moment to kick his ass. God damn it, Lehman, can't you at least kill one traitor Primarch? He's already had three of them at his mercy and goes all soft at the last second. With the power buff of Molech secured, the assault on Terra was to begin. The traitors had nine legions buffed by chaos as well as millions of cultists, dozens of titans, countless demons and other monsters. They also had eight primarchs. Alpharius was dead at this point. The loyalists had three legions, the custodies and sisters of silence and a huge force of guardsmen, titans, four primarchs and of course the big E and they were also defending the most defendable structure in the galaxy, but even then they were still disgustingly outnumbered and outgunned. Yet the traders couldn't do it. Wave after wave of warp-infused freaks and empowered space marines died as they tried to take the palace. Rogel kicked Fulgrim's ass, Sanguinius probably kicked Angron's ass, half the trader army got bored and went off to terrorize the population in the world, yet the palace stood. The Ultramarines, Space Wolves and Dark Angels was also soon to arrive on Terra, which would be the end of the traders. Hence Horus, or maybe it was Abaddon, lowered the void shields on their ship as an invitation for the Emperor to come fight. The Big E is a sucker for invitations, hence he, Rogel, Sanguinius and a number of custodians and Space Marines boarded the ship. Sanguinius found Horus first and the two fought. Now currently it's thought that Sanguinius was wounded and tired and Horus was filled to the brim with power and fresh. Hence Horus killed Sanguinius, causing the black rage within the Blood Angels. Horus and the Big E then fight, with Horus kicking the shit out of the Big E due to the Big E not being able to bring himself to kill his favourite son. Horus then kills Alanis Pius, causing the Big E to realise that all bold people are evil, and he Kamehameha's Horus and deletes him from existence. Now that's what we know so far, as the new Horus Heresy books haven't concluded yet, but I feel like the ending will be different. For starters, the Emperor doesn't seem like the kind of guy to hesitate and let his emotions stop him. The Emperor we have grown to know would not hesitate in deleting Horus, especially since how obviously evil and gone Horus was by that point. Like, by the Siege of Terra, Horus was little more than the meat suit for the Chaos Gods. His soul had already been more or less completely raped. On top of this, Sanguinius is a beast, so here's what I think would be a cool twist. Sanguinius finds Horus first in the two fight. Horus gains the upper hand and nearly wins. 
However, Sanguinius falls into the black rage, causing his sons to do so, and he kills Horus. The biggie walks in to see Horus defeated, but Sanguinius, in his rage, attacks the Emperor. The Emperor cannot bring himself to kill his true favourite son, hence takes an absolute beating before he realises he has to kill Sanguinius out of mercy, and he does so. He then destroys Horus' soul so that if Horus ever came back via chaos or something else, he could never tell anyone of what happened to Sanguinius. It's a bit of a far-fetched theory, but I think it suits pretty well into the grim darkness of 40k. Whatever happens, I'm very keen to see. With Horus dead, the traitor forces break and retreat, being chased all the way back into the Eye of Terror, where they sat on a demon world with Horus's corpse and begun to rot. Fabius Bile led the Empress' children to attack the Sons of Horus, and they stole Horus's body with the intention of cloning him to reunite the traitor legions. However, the issue is that Primarchs are more than just the body. Their souls give them power. Hence, the Horus clone had no soul, as Horus' soul didn't exist anymore. So when Abaddon led a counter-attack, he was able to kill the Horus clone in combat, earning the respect of the Sons of Horus and becoming their leader. He then renamed them to the Black Legion, as they coloured their armour black in mourning of Horus, bringing an end to the Sons of Horus and the start of the Black Legion, which is a video in itself. Now what of Garviel? Well, turns out surviving the betrayal of your father, as well as like three exterminatuses, isn't good for your mental health. Hence, Lokin went insane and wandered the planet of Istvan. To make matters worse, various of his dead allies had been reanimated by Nurgle as zombies, hence he was alone on a planet full of his dead friends and zombies that he had to fight all the time. Eventually, Nathaniel came back for him and rescued his friend. He then became a Knight of Malkador and went on various missions against the Traitor Legions throughout the galaxy. Eventually, Lokin and many other loyalists from Traitor Legions were offered the role of a Grey Knight by the Emperor himself. They accepted, except for Lokin, who knew that this destiny was not his. His destiny was to kill the Mournival. His destiny was to kill the Sons of Horus. And kill them he has been doing. We don't know his final fate yet, however, Abaddon is still alive and it seems Lokin is not. So it seems like they face off and it doesn't end well for Lokin. In saying that though, Lokin is a beast and he's been tearing the Sons of Horus a new arsehole on the daily, even saying this cool line, I was never a son of Horus. I was and remain a lunar wolf, a proud son of Chthonia, a loyal servant of the Emperor, beloved by all. I am your enemy. That was straight to Horus, by the way. Talk about a burn, son. There are others, like the obnoxious little Horus, the large funny Torgadon, and the incompetent Abaddon, but Lokin is the one that deserves screen time. With Horus dead and the Lunar Wolves replaced by the Black Legion, there is nothing for them beyond the Horus heresy. They are gone, poof, dead, deleted, deceased, penetrated, molested, kitty fiddled, and finger blasted. And that does us for today, guy. Alright, that's about it. This is when they say... So, these are Black Legion we've been dealing with? Yep. Apparently their god has been coming back. Apparently Horus came back. Meaning, we gotta uh, warn them. But why would they attack Earth? The real question is, what does Earth have that they want? Are you saying they want something from Earth? He nods. What would they want? Earth is... Well, Earth. There's literally nothing there. Never say that. So you're saying they want something from Earth, but they don't want to admit it. They're looking for something. We don't have to find out. Look. This is when they look, and they see the Black Legion. Hey, are you willing to... Yeah, we are willing. Looks like there's only the Black Legion here. Looks like you have to call upon some kit. Looks like you have to call upon some space marines. Great. Looks like it. If... This is when Dink. This is when he says, "Dinky, Najiro, you go back to Earth. What about you two? We'll be fine." It's not the first time we dealt with these guys. This is when Izuku pretty much just stares there. there. And also, the Chaos God, I mean, the Chaos, Chaos Marines started evading Earth, but uh, pretty much this is when other Space Marines showed up, such as Grey Knights, uh, Black Hack Templars, you name it. And any other people who pretty much been created. Now, this is when pretty much 
as Bakuga was leading the charge with the Ultramarines, and Izuku was leading the assassin, the, pretty much the downfall also to the Chaos Marines. The Black Legion failed horribly and died a fucking brutal and painful death. That, that led to the death of many, many innocents and many other their lives at their cause. So pretty much, Izuku Midoriya fucked up them well until he faced the new leader of the Black Legion. Now, Izuku is far more trained because he has more experience. So, sure, the Black Legion leader is old and old and has more fighting style, but it's his recklessness and his, his fight tactic fighting that got him down. Um, whatever or that the ultimate, whatever they had, obviously fused him up with chaos, and they wanted to find the weapon they needed. So Izuku knew that he had to figure it out. So after he f defeated the Black Egg Legion leader, and all of them retreated as soon as Izuku showed the their leader their head. This is what Izuku says. This. Huh. This is what Izuku says. They're looking for something, obviously. But what and whom? Whom are they looking for? This is when Izuku starts going up, up see, in them. But this is when Izuku also sees that Bakugo was with a concerned look. You okay? Not really, no. What are they looking for? Who are they looking for? Now that could be anything. It could be anything, really. Are you saying they could be here for shits and giggles? I wouldn't go that far, but maybe. They weren't really hesitant. They didn't even try to kill us, either. Even if they weren't, they showed little mercy. So what would they want? Don't know. Looks like we're going to find out, though. When Izuku and Bakugo manage to get back to Earth, and they start searching a full fucking place on the museum, they find out where the fuck they're looking for and what are they looking for. And this is when they found it. Well, fuck me. No wonder they've been looking for this place. How the hell do they manage to find this damn thing? This is when they find the Axe of the Space Wolves and the last known Space Wolf armor. Well, fuck. No wonder people have been looking. That's not the only thing. Look. It's a Chaos Medallion. Hmm. Uh -uh, I ain't touching that. At. And this is when Bakugo said... This is when uh, they immediately called the Grey Knights and they managed to get destroy the artifact. At. The Grey Knights tried, wanted to attempt to murder the... Alpha Legion, but due to the Ultramarines, they fought with them and pretty much went against it, along with the Black Templars. So, so they pretty much called off the attack on the Alpha Legion, and the Alpha Legion then now protects, I quote, protects the Legion. So pretty much Earth is now under the Alpha Legion protection. However, they still keep the secret among them. Dinky and Neji, I mean, Jajiro became heroes. They even got married. Right? And even had kids. Well, Bakugo and Najiro did. It, and Bakugo, I mean, Dinky and Izuku adopted one. One and named after. For it. They named her. I'm going to say Ikshi. As for All for One, he was betrayed by the Chaos Marines and pretty much was killed along with the League of Villains. Which was kind of stupid in their part since they could have used the hero of the villains to pretty much fight off against That's the Chaos. Against the fucking idiots. Oh well. Anyway, this is when Izuku says, thanks. Alright. 
This is when Izuku just sits down and minds his own concern. Well, that's everything. But here's what I need to know. What? Why? This is when pretty much... Actually, that's about it. I, I'm lagging off. This has been the one shot out of What If Deku Joined the Alpha Legion. Like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. This has been Dunkle Dylan here, God of Chaos, and Shadow, if she's there. Well, bye.